it's quite common for us to just not uh, take care of the tax obligations because we're not used to doing that. In that case, we're going to have to make our own estimated payments and make sure that, that we're paying as we earn the money, which is difficult because we don't know how much money we're even going to earn because it's a new business uh, possibly. And then we have to actually you know, make the payments and then we have more complexities with regards to tax return calculation because we have to make basically an income statement. If we don't do those things, the IRS could have the income side due to 1099s that are reported to them, but won't have the expense side due to the fact they don't have all the expenses that we needed to consume to generate the revenue, which could really get people behind and messed up on taxes. Okay. So what kinds of federal taxes do I have to pay? That's going to be one of the questions that we come up to. Obviously, for federal income taxes, we have a federal income tax system, but we also have Social Security and Medicare that we saw is a significant factor that can come in with regards to self-employment tax. So that's huge. Uh, what forms must I file? So now if I'm a sole proprietor, we have typical questions in terms of business entities. Is it a separate business entity? This kind of leads you into questions as to whether or not you want to be a, a, sole, a sole proprietor reported on a Schedule C versus a flow through entity like an S corporation or a, uh, even a C corporation or an LLC. Now, as a tax preparer, remember, you have to kind of get an idea of where you want to be put in your time. What kind of returns do you want to be specializing in? And what kind of network might you want to be involved with for f other services that you can basically uh, recommend for other things? Being very careful on those other recommended services because you always have people that are going to basically be selling certain things. They focus on a very specific thing, like they make S corporations, right? We just make S corporations. Well, that means that if they're if they're that means that if they're a hammer everything's a nail everything needs to be an s corporation if you are an s corporation maker so uh, as a tax preparer or a general practitioner then sometimes people might come to you for those kind of questions uh, about things like like uh, should i have a separate entity is it worth it so it could be and it could not be but you know the questions come up in terms of where you're going to fit in and what's your business model going to look like with that kind of advice? So what must I do if, if I have employees? So note that if I'm self-employed, that means that, that if I'm reported on a Schedule C, that's the type of business entity that I am. But I still am going to run my business as though it's separate from my personal self. I have a separate set of books and part of that separate set of business running might include that I have employees. So the fact that I have employees doesn't mean that I, I can't still report like a fairly basic and simple Schedule C reporting as opposed to having a separate tax return for a C corporation or an S corporation or an LLC. However, I do have to deal with payroll. So payroll is a whole nother world in and of itself that you, that you have to deal with in a specialized area. If you're a tax preparer, questions come up in terms of what are you going to be your bookkeeping help and resources? Do you want to help with the bookkeeping, have that part of your firm or whatnot? Do you want to be networking with other bookkeepers? And then payroll is a crucial part of bookkeeping as businesses get larger, not only being like a sole proprietor that works themselves for like gig work or something, but possibly having a larger business where of course they deal with employees 